your hands together and praise that name with me today. Oh, let's praise the name of Jesus. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Praise His mighty name. Praise His mighty name. Take a little time and give Him thanks. Take a little time and tell Him He is great. Come back and sing it one more time. There is no rival. There is no equal. in this atmosphere that is anointed with your sweet Holy Spirit. I speak healing to every sick person under the sound of my voice. I proclaim wherever you're hearing this, that he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was on him and by his stripes you are healed. Receive help. Receive renewing. Receive restoring. Receive the healing power of Jesus' name. Clap your hands if you believe that He's a God who still heals and performs mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, why don't you turn if you're at one of our campuses and smile at someone and tell them you're glad they're in church with you today. What a wonderful, wonderful spirit of praise we feel here today. Welcome to all of you joining us online and all of you who are here today in person. We deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate you joining us at all of our campuses. Thank you for being a part and we're so excited about what God is doing. How many of you were blessed last Sunday by the amazing testimonies in that baptism service? We have, we have heard so many reports of amazing uh, life change that happened from people viewing and watching other people tell their story and get baptized in water. And we posted one of them, and it has had over right at 200,000 views already in the first six or seven days 
And that's pretty amazing. And it's just going to keep growing. I love that. I love that ordinary people, because that's all God's got anyhow, but ordinary people can tell their story and people get saved by the hundreds. And it's just an amazing thing to me. To God be the glory. Everybody shout to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me. And I'm going to go for a few minutes today to the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter is where I want to go. And I have something new that I want to share with you today that I think will bless you and will help you. And I think you'll find yourself, you may wonder where I'm going. You may wonder for a minute what I'm talking about. But I do believe that what I'm going to share today will hit you right where you're living before we leave this place in just a few minutes. Everybody say, Lord, open my heart today. Speak to me today. Are you expecting God to do something in this service? I am. One verse of scripture, verse one of Ecclesiastes 10. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment. And cause it to give off a foul odor, so does a little folly, a little, a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. Dead flies, the King James says, in the ointment causes a stench. Dead flies getting in the oil causes a problem. Dead flies make something precious like ointment. I mean, if you don't believe it's precious, you ought to read the story in the Bible about the woman who broke open the alabaster box. The scripture said a precious ointment and poured it on the feet of Jesus. And the Bible said it was worth a year's wages. I mean, it's precious. It's, it represents Jesus. It represents the anointed one, Christ. It's not about some perfume, some substance. It's about, it's always a picture of Jesus and how precious he is and how fragrant his presence is and attractive to people. When that woman broke open that alabaster box, it was what she used in her profession of being a prostitute to attract men. And when she broke it open and poured it on the feet of Jesus, she was saying, I'm never going back to the old life that I used to have. I'll never go back to what God has set me free from. What a testimony. What a powerful thing. But in the text, it warns us about flies. One of the names of Satan is Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. He's, he's the head of the fly family. <laughs> and it said that the flies, certain Certain flies can get in something precious and cause it to go from a beautiful fragrance, a lovely fragrance, to a putrefied and, and stench in the, in the nostrils of the people who get around it. It's really what he's talking about is certain, certain Christians, I believe, that because of the way they present Jesus... Instead of drawing people, it repels them. And there are, there are those in the fly family that we're going to talk about, three of them real quick. There's butterfly. Butterflies. Did you know it's the largest member of the fly family? It is the weakest member also. Outwardly, it looks impressive. Externally, it looks so majestic, but internally it's so weak that much smaller insects prey on it and devour it at will. Outwardly there's a show, but inwardly there's nothing there. And butterfly Christians cause people to not be attracted to Jesus. I want to ask you, how are you doing not outside? I know you got your Christian face on this morning. I know you got all the... If you would have seen Eli, the high priest, when he walked into the temple with that 
priest's garment on, burning incense. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You would have thought if ever there was a man of God, there's one right there. But the truth was he looked good on the outside, but he was dying as a man of God, losing his vision, losing his, his anointing with God, losing even the priesthood, losing his family because he had one thing outwardly, but nothing going on inwardly. Samson, when the spirit came on him, looked so mighty. He was a butterfly. Everybody stood in awe of the anointing on his life when the spirit came on him and he would do amazing feats. And yet the text tells us that he was so weak inside that he laid his head in the lap of Delilah and fell into gross sin. It's possible to have an outward show but no inward glow of a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be a showy Christian that is shrinking in my relationship with God where nothing's going on inside of me and all I've got is a show up and a show out at church. You're not going to believe this, but I found another fly. And this one's in the church too. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a butterfly? I'm just checking. Anything going on inside there? You look good today, but is there anything inside that looks good? I'm not making this up. You can look this up. There's a fly called the robber, R-O-B-B-E-R, the robber fly. (laughs) This is what they said. It's a little fly with big wings. It makes a lot of noise, a whistling noise continually, and it waits for the other flies to collect food, and then when they go off to get more food, he swoops in and he steals their food. And he makes a lot of noise all the time, except when he's stealing, he gets real quiet. (laughs) And there's some robber flies in the kingdom. Where's that at in the Bible? Malachi chapter three, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings. But prove me in this area, saith the Lord, and see if I will not open you a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't be able to contain. It'll be so much you'll have to figure out how you can pass it on because your saucer will overflow, 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 and you'll have to come up with creativity just to deal with it. But if you're a robber fly that makes a lot of noise, but if we, if we really look at you, you take a lot, but you don't contribute. There's something about that that is a stench. And then there's another member of the fly family, and it's the last one that I want you to hurry and get to. It's the mosquito. Did you know it's part of the fly family? And often we say this time of the year, we're really battling with them in Georgia, aren't we? I went and got my car the other I can't figure out how they're getting in my car. But I look on the windshield, almost had a wreck. I was fighting that, get, get away from me, trying to kill it in my windshield. We talk about the mosquito bite. But did you know a mosquito has zero teeth? It has no fangs, none. Well, how did I get that red bump on my ankle? He uses his tongue. He's got a long tongue. (laughs) It's going to get all right. Just relax. (laughs) It's like a needle. And he sticks his tongue in and he has one intent to remove the blood. And he flies from per Once he uncovers and removes the blood and finds out about some- something about somebody, he buzzes over to another Christian and sticks that tongue in them and gets them good and poisoned and steals the blood. They start talking about it, lose the anointing, and everybody becomes gossipers instead of people who bear one another's burdens. A talebearer revealeth secrets But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth a matter. They can be trusted. 1 Peter 4 and 8, love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers mosquitoes spread with long tongues. 
Isaiah said, give me the tongue of the learned. That if I'm going to use my tongue, that I might speak a word in season to them that are weary. So I've been searching and I go on and start looking up every sermon I can find, everything I can find online about mosquitoes and what's the Bible say about mosquitoes. And it's interesting, I came upon something that I think we need to understand. If you go to these parks, especially in Florida, they've got water parks, they've got Disney World down there, they've got all kinds of uh, parks where they attract masses and masses of people. The amazing thing about them is that whole area where there's 30,000 hotel rooms and the park that is known as the happiest place in the world attracts millions and millions of people from all over the world. It's built literally on a swamp. Before it was there, it was nothing but a swamp and they build it up, but it's still surrounded by nothing but a swamp. And the thing you need to understand is when it's feeding time, these little insects will take five millionths of a liter of blood during a feeding. All mosquitoes are after one thing. They're after blood. They can fly 1.5 miles per hour. And the world, according to Guinness Book of Records, the world's most dangerous creature is not the black mamba snake in South Africa that I've seen before. It's not the puff adder. It's not a lion. It's not a grizzly bear. It's not a great white shark. The animal that kills the most human beings every year is the tiny little mosquito. It kills a million people a year worldwide. It's responsible for a million deaths. Obviously, when we understand that they have to be intentional about dealing with mosquitoes, when they're attracting large amounts of people on top of a swamp, and the church is built, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we're built on sinners. But it's dangerous if we start letting what removes the blood get in and feel comfortable and lay its eggs in our life, in our family, in our home, and in our church. Galatians 5 and verse 9 says, this is a warning, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. It starts very, very small, that small, tiny, little insect. Sin and mosquitoes have something in common. They both want to take away the blood. And we must be intentional the blood is what makes us like Jesus. The blood is what cleanses us from all of our sins. We're redeemed by God through his blood, Jesus Christ. Don't let sin suck the life out of you. You know what they do? They spray twice a day in those parks. They spray at the optimal time in the morning and in the evening when they know those insects are feeding. They deliberately, with great intention, know that the way that we can keep this environment, we can be in a swamp, but not be overcome by the swamp, is we gotta have something going in the morning. I need to get up and burn incense and open this book up and I need to have a little prayer time and it's not how long you pray, it's just saying, God, I give you this day. 
I give you my family. Lay your hands on your children. Speak a blessing over them. Call all their names out. You know what you're doing? You're making sure the blood is not being lifted off of their life. Job made sacrifice every day and named every one of his children. He did this continually. Ten children and he killed ten lambs. And it's a type of how we ought to apply the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus. Twice a day, sunset, they do it again. Morning, before the people come, they do it again. You would be amazed how sin wouldn't have a little swamp in your life if you'd start getting up and getting something going in the morning and then grab your wife by the hand before you go to bed and pray and plead the blood of Jesus. We've got to get the family altar back. We've got to get prayer back. We've got to get burn in sense of worship. We can't just go through the routine. It's not that we're just raising our hands. We've got mosquitoes buzzing all around us. And, all, and sometimes we're not... We, when we're praising the Lord, we're doing this. Get, get off of me. They paint a picture online about a world that doesn't have mosquito control. It's a picture of mosquitoes out of control if we don't intentionally exterminate them in the morning, in the evening health issues beyond anything we can imagine. Torment like you can't imagine. They said that if we hadn't learned how to repel and how to kill these things, and it's a type of sin to me. It's just annoying. It's just tormenting. Everywhere you go, you can't enjoy life when you begin to allow sin to come in and it just begins to, to cause you to not it's annoying. It's not, it's, it's not just annoying, it's tormenting. You ever laid there and tried to go to sleep? You ever camped out in a tent? That's why I don't like to do it. All it takes is one to get in there. And I can't sleep all night long. What would the church look like without sin control? They have a program called Fight the Bite. <laughs> well, what are we doing intentionally? They said even the buildings in those parks, even the buildings are designed in such a way that water will not collect anywhere in the park. They said the number one thing that they do to fight the infestation of larvae and mosquitoes and mosquito eggs being being hatched all over that property is they make sure there's no still standing water anywhere. If there's water, it's moving. It's in a fountain, it's moving. They make sure there's movement going on in the water. Oh, you don't hear me. Exodus 29 and verse 38 said, Every day you shall put two lambs on the altar for a morning and an evening sacrifice. Every day, morning sacrifice. Every day, evening sacrifice. That is your worship. That is your word. That is your prayer. That is you taking time to acknowledge him in all of your ways. You know what you're doing? You're killing that which wants to remove the blood, which wants to torment you, which wants to keep you confused and not hearing God's peace throughout out your day. It's the optimal time to do it. In the morning and in the evening. Just acknowledge him. Just worship him. Just to give him even three minutes of a family altar coming together and everybody acknowledging Jesus in this house. And then make sure there's no steel water. I worry about our church. I get burdens and I've been burdened because we've been through the pandemic and we still don't have all of our people back. They've just decided for whatever reason, and I understand if it's a health reason, keep doing it, but there's others who have just allowed the water to stop moving. The water represents the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers. You can't let it get still. You can't let it get stagnant. You can't let, because if you do, it attracts those 
those insects, those mosquitoes, and they lay their eggs in still water. If you've ever been to any of those parks, as soon as it rains, they run out with those little pushing those things. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. That's what I'm doing. I'm saying, get it out of your life. Get it out of your life. Don't let that. Oh, it's just a little thing, pastor. It's just a little thing, but it's, re, it's trying to remove the blood, not just off you, but off your children, off your family, off your marriage. You got to, it's, you don't be a butterfly that's big outside, religious, known, but nothing going on the inside. Water has to always flow. When it becomes stationary and stale and stagnant, that's what causes sin to breed and reproduce in your life. How long has it been since you felt a move of God? How long has it been since you wept and you cried and you prayed in God's presence? I'm not a crier. We'll let you get bad news today and you'll cry. You just don't have enough motivation. I'm not a shouter. Sit on a pen and you'll shout. You just don't have enough motivation. And when you learn who he is, he'll move you. He made you emotional and you won't just use those emotions for a ball game. You'll use them for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I need some people to get a, get a river flowing again. Get to moving again. Get to hungering and running and chasing after God. Steel and stagnant would describe much of the body of Christ. We're supposed to be a flowing river. Instead, we're a swamp. Don't lose it. Don't lose the river. Don't lose it. The Bible said in Genesis, the first thing the Spirit of God did in the third verse of the Bible, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. If the Spirit's in a church, there's going to be some moving. I'm not talking about just physical. I'm talking about you get moved in your core. You hear these testimonies, and before you know it, you're embarrassed. You're a big old grown man. You got tears coming out of your eyes. Something's wrong if you don't ever get moved in God's presence. Something you ought, it ought to disturb you because whether you realize it or not, you are becoming a breeding ground for sin to lay its eggs and reproduce. We keep them away by flowing. <laughs> you remember the four lepers? That's what some of you need to ask the question, why sit we here till we die? Man, I feel like, I feel like I'm preaching. I'm plowing and I'm preaching. And I'm going to preach you out of complacency. I'm going to preach you out of lukewarmness. I'm going to preach you out of the swamp into the river. I'm going to preach you where there's some joy and there's some excitement and there's some, there's some fire and some zeal of the Lord. I've heard it all. I've seen it all. Well, you know what you need? A fresh move. It's not enough to know it until the Spirit moves on what you know. It's nothing. At the pool of Bethesda, no miracles would happen until the angel touched the water and troubled the water. And when the water got to moving, there's miracle in movement. Wonder if I give an altar call this morning, who would move? Rather than try and kill all the adult mosquitoes, why don't we stop them? from having a breeding ground to lay their eggs right in our life every day because we are not intentionally keeping sin out. We're letting any and everything come in and take the blood, take the blood, take the blood, take the blood. You know what else? I'm not making this up. They said the way that they keep, not only do they keep the water flowing, but they said they keep, fans going all the, they have massive fans that you can't even see and they have fans going all the time that are blowing the air because the mosquitoes can't fly but a mile and a half uh, you know per mile per hour and so if the wind is strong enough they'll give up and go somewhere where it's easy to fly 
Well, Acts chapter two said on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, there came a mighty rushing wind. Like the sound of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is blowing, when the water's flowing and the wind is blowing, that's not, that's not breeding ground for sin in our life. I'm sorry you came to hear a good make me feel better about myself message. This will help you feel better about yourself. There's nothing that makes you feel better than when you stand before God and you Now listen, I'm not claiming, I'm not claiming they get all the mosquitoes. There's some that get through. And I'm not claiming if you worship and you give God time in the morning and the evening and if you get the wind to blowing and the water to flowing, I'm not claiming you'll never get bit. You're still gonna get bit. You're still susceptible to sin. But but it's just, it's a big difference between occasionally getting bit and being a landing ground airport for them. Because you're just a big old puddle of water that never moves. We're going to take a praise break. You need to get your dance back. You need to get your shout back. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Assembly of God. You better get a move going on inside of you. You've got to have more than outward religion in an hour like this. You've got to have something real. You've got to be intentional about guarding the culture of your life. Can I preach five more minutes? I will. You know, they designed those buildings. The Bible said that your body is God's building. Your body is God's temple. Am I allowing the water in some area of my life have I, have I just said it's just a little thing? Because once you start doing that, you'll have puddles all over the place where sin is attracted more and more to lay its eggs, its lies, its deceptions, its compromises, its carnality. And you're not walking in the Spirit. I just... I just think it's so important, and I'm coming to a close, but what blessed me was when I looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it showed me something. It showed me that the number one repellent, notice how the text starts, dead flies in the anointing oil. There's one thing that'll kill them every time. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit brings a word and a preacher gets up and preaches under the anointing, it starts killing flies, butterflies and robber flies and mosquitoes that are trying to steal the blood and lift the blood off of our lives. The number one repellent against the attack our, our, our character, our name, our family, our marriages. The number one thing is David said in Psalms 92, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Isn't that something? You know what else I heard somebody say as I was studying, listening, reading? They said they even put chickens in coops all over those parks, back behind the, the fences. You don't see this. As an act intentionally, because chickens have an immunity to the diseases those insects carry. But they check their blood frequently because if West Nile is in that area. If Zika is in that area, it'll show up in that chicken blood. And they know to concentrate more on that area because it's a little, 
It's, it's, it's a little compromised right now. Old proud, arrogant Simon Peter said, Lord, the others may, he threw him under the bus, the others may deny you, but I'll never, I'll never get drunk. I'll never get high. I'll never do this and do that. Be careful when you start saying, I'll never. (laughs) Jesus had a strange response. He said, before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. Jesus was trying to warn him. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Look at this area of your life. Look at this area where the enemy has a swamp where he's laying his eggs and stand up to it and get your broom out and sweep the puddles out of your life. You need a, you need a fresh anointing. That's where dead fly. When they get in an anointed atmosphere, their wings get sticky and they can't get out. It's the only thing that can kill Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, is the anointing. Dead flies in the ointment. I always saw it as a negative. Now I see it as praise God, we've got the answer. It's a fresh anointing. It's getting in a service and saying, Lord, move me again. My water is still and stagnant, but I'm open to a brand new wind and a brand new flow of your spirit. Anybody here ready? Anybody here longing? Anybody here tired of being a breeding ground for sin? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Examine your temple. Are there any puddles that you keep saying it's just a little thing? I know this is different, but it's exactly what you need to hear. Get up on your feet at every campus and for the next five seconds, Throw your hands up in the air and I want you to open up your mouth and I want you to go after God with all of your heart. I want you to ask him if you're sitting there until you die to give you a fresh move. Say, Lord, I need the wind to blow away that which is trying to remove the blood from this area of my life. You may have a struggle. I'm not saying the enemy won't ever bite you there again, but I'm telling you, you can get rid of that swamp. You can get rid of that larva. You can get rid of those eggs. You can have a fresh encounter with God on a Sunday morning that can change your whole outlook. Come on, church, lift your voice and praise Him. 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 Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Anybody hungry for a move? I want everybody in this church, anybody in this church who, and first of all, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching with you. I'm hearing God just like you. And something in me says, I want the water to be troubled again in my life. Anybody feel that? Get out of your seat and come to the altar. Get out of your seat and come to the altar. It's been too long since we had a mighty move of God. It's been too long since you felt the fresh wind and the flow of the Holy Spirit. Come make a fresh commitment. Come get a fresh anointing. Come get a fresh anointing. Everybody raise your hands and say, Lord, I want a fresh anointing. I don't want an outside butterfly, churchy, religious thing with Jesus. I want a moving on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Come on, burn the incense. It's the morning sacrifice. Come on, you don't have to wait on this one. It's the morning sacrifice. It's the morning sacrifice. 
If you don't do the morning, I know you won't do the evening by yourself. But if you can't praise Him in the morning with a bunch of Christians, let's burn incense. Let's get rid of that which is lifting the blood. Uncover. Put fresh sacrifice on the altar this morning. God, I need a move. I need a move. In you I live. And I move. Act 17. And I have my being. Sandwich between living and being. It's moving. Moving. Are you moving? Or are you stuck? Ask God to send revival to your house. Revival to your soul. A river of living water. Come on, worship Him. Worship Him. Burn in sins that repel the enemy. He's anointing you with a fresh anointing this morning. to get gloriously saved. And you're going to feel, you already feel something moving again. Don't stifle that. If you'll draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. If you'll ask, you'll receive. If you'll seek, you'll find. He'll give you peace. He'll anoint you today with fresh oil. He'll write your name in the book of forgiveness, the book of life. You can leave here with dead flies in the oil. And you can start a brand new life in Jesus Christ. How many of you know that's the truth? Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, I'll do it another time, but this is your moment. This is your time. I won't embarrass you. I won't humiliate you. I'm going to pray for you. And I have faith because I know how to pray. I use the name of Jesus and that gets me through every time. I'm going to pray for you, but he never comes where he's not invited. Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus to be Lord of everything. I need some things swept out of my life. I need some flies to die this morning in the blood and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Pray for me. If that's you and you're ready for change, raise your hand as high as you can get it right where you're standing. Raise it high and unashamed. It's powerful, powerful, powerful. High and unashamed. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Keep your hand right where you got it. If you're standing around somebody with their hand raised, gently just lay your hand on their shoulder. It's an act of support. 
You got to group up to grow up. You got to get around the right people. And right where you're standing, there's some good people that are praying for you. Now, everybody say this wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive today this word from the Lord. And I receive the anointing that is coming to my life right now. Kill the flies, the flies of addiction, the flies of shame, the flies of condemnation, the flies of guilt. Set me free and give me a new beginning and a new life. And today I receive the moving of the water. I receive the river of living water, Jesus Christ. Now just begin to praise him one more time and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Can we give God a mighty praise? I want to tell you something in closing. While I've been preaching, just toward the end here, I look down and I recognize somebody in our audience that I want to recognize. How many of you ever heard man cow on the radio? Raise your hand. You have, a big, you have a big crowd here, sir, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but we are so honored to have you with us this morning. Man cow is down here on the second row. What a blessing. What a blessing to have you today. And may God give you a fresh anointing, sir. And may your voice carry help to hurting people all over the world. God bless you. Are you glad you came to church today? Next Sunday, I want to tell you something. Next Sunday, the one and only, the unbelievably anointed and powerful, Reggie Dabbs, right here at Free Chapel. If you've never heard this man play the sax and sing, that's why I like it. Play the sax and preach. You are in for one of the greatest treats of your life. I've never heard him miss. I've never heard him not bring a now word from God. And now here's the blessing. How many of you are not going to be robber flies this week? How many of you are going to give the Lord your tithe and your offering? Come on. Don't give him the outward show. But, and remember, we have a miracle going on. Oh, by the way, you... Uh, Next week, we'll announce exactly where we are. It is a miracle the way you've given the last four weeks. An absolute miracle. We had a family online that said, we will match up to $4 million over the next few months if you will get your church to give. And do you know that you have given over and above what we did last year this same period of time, $1.6 million over what you did this exact same time last year. That is a miracle. Come on and clap like God's going to win some souls. God's going to help us do some things we've only dreamed of. So we're almost halfway. So remember, every dollar you give, and it doesn't count till we get over whatever this was last year. Once we reach that threshold, anything over that, it kicks in. So everybody has a part in this. So if you were ever going to support the church, do it now. God will bless you. Are you ready? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And every one of you that raised your hand, go back to the connection lounge and tell them you prayed we've got a devotional we've got a bible and we'll get you signed up to get baptized in water and we can't wait to hear your story we love you so much god bless you have a great great week everybody burn and put those sacrifices on the altar watch what a difference it'll make in the morning in the evening set your alarm and just take five minutes five minutes of a devotional five minutes you'll how your day will be filled with more of Jesus if you just make a little room. Evening and sunrise. Watch what God will do. We love you. Be blessed, everybody. Walk in victory this week. Walk in freedom this week. Walk in joy this week. Be blessed.
Oh, what a powerful word that was. If today you made the decision to be saved, first off, we want to say we are so proud of you and we are so excited for you. Please feel free to text AMEN to 313131 so we can get connected with you and help you out with some next steps in your spiritual journey. Also, we want to get you connected into the online family, so please go to freechapel.org slash online and you can get connected right there. Also, please feel free to put your prayer requests in the chat. We've got a team of people praying with you, praying for you, and praying over you. So that's all for our time with you this Sunday. We pray you have a blessed Sunday, and we'll see you next week.